There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here calling today to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just the clothes they stand up in and a few basic tools. And these guys are going to be completely alone. Oh my god, yes! Filming everything themselves. OK, I got him. We've landed in the middle of an alien movie. When pushed to the extreme, no. do they still have what it takes to survive? It will become Lord of the Flies. You just wank a sign towards me. I think we'll start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. It's so important to look after each other and never, ever give up, even when it's all going wrong. Nice. One of them is going to say something. I'm going to let them f***ing have it. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, great! Two weeks ago, 13 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Come on, nature, give us some food. They're alone, with no provisions and only a handful of basic tools. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen. There's not a piece of gear that I couldn't pick up. There's just sand all over it. But they are living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. So far, they've had one big hunting success. Thank you, gentlemen. Get on your way. But now, they're living through famine. I would eat a scabby horse in between two piss-soaked mattresses. And frustrations... Stairs! I think it broke me hand. ...have reached boiling point. Why can you overrule somebody yeah, by overruled, shouting? Yeah. I have nothing more to say. The island has almost claimed its first victim. Ryan! Ryan! He's an idiot. How people die. <laughs> 13 people will not leave this island. Let's just see how shit goes down now. I feel like I'm living in, like, Epping Forest. In Epping Forest? Yeah. Do you get tarantulas in Epping Forest? No, but you get big Scarfings? spiders. No. No? Bell constructors? No. Just a load of doggers. There's doggers. A lot of doggers. The men have now been scraping by on starvation rations for two weeks. We've decided to call this island Surely Island because, well, you know, we keep saying, surely there must be more fish. Surely there must be pigs. Surely there must be other things we can eat other than snails. Energy levels are at rock bottom. Today's been a struggle, just a physically, physically hard struggle to do the simplest things. We've got one fish that came out of the gill net on our beach this morning. Uh, I've got three portions left for team malnutrition. It's Tony, Dino. So the disappointment of not having enough carbs and food in general is kind of contributing to the mood in the camp. I'm so hungry now. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I want crisps galore. I want that cookie dough. I want <laughs> pizza. <laughs> I want hot dogs, sausage, bacon, eggs. I don't even like eggs. That's because you have to talk about food all day. You're torturing right. yourself. Just pass me a coconut shit. <laughs> <laughs> For me, survival is feast or famine. I think that's quickly becoming apparent. There's no steadiness to our food. Here you go, mate. Come on. Come on, just look. That's it, that's it. <laughs> mm. We've got no means of preserving the food that we catch. So when we get it, we have to eat it, and when we haven't got it, we're in a famine situation. How's that lovely coconut, though? It's not hitting a spot. This is one of the most serious cases of hunger I've ever seen. It's extreme. I don't think it's going to end. I remember as part of our combat survival training in the military, one of the things I learned is actually just how hard work it is, the business of surviving. You know, all day you're, you're, you're working to collect water, find food, repair your camp, 
protect your fire, find firewood. You know, it's a constant process. And I think one of the key elements in a good survivor is a hard work ethic. We need Karen Lee. You might be right, mate. Because the fish aren't coming. They will bug it off. Rupert is determined to keep scouring the island for his toughest prey. Two weeks ago, I killed a caiman, and it fed all of us for, I think, three meals. So it's um, definitely a food source worth chasing. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm on this one. Fuck it, man. Let's do it. I know these people that are desperate to wrestle a caiman. I don't see the need of it, really. I think we can sustain ourselves on snails and things. This is so uh, caimanville. It's now a straightforward uh, find it, catch it, kill it, eat it. For Rupert, Mike and Chris, hunting in the mangrove swamps is using a huge amount of precious energy. I feel as if I'm climbing a mountain. It's just becoming more and more difficult. Short of breath, weak, legs feel as if they're not functioning. But uh, we need some food. We need some decent food. We've seen hide nor hair since that first one. Mind you, if we did find one, we'd be too knackered to catch him. Yeah. Oh, well, stop whinging, carry on. Whoop. Got this field in no time. Yeah, it's easier in this tree, have you? It's got to be about over 100 in there already. Nice and easy meal. Really easy, they're just everywhere. Saki, Ryan and Joe gather snails, the grim staple of the men's diet. It tastes better every, every day. It's a shame they're only one calorie each. There's certain people who have an eye for foraging. You've got certain people who are better at physically catching things. Everybody who's here is able-bodied, but some just work harder than others. <sighs> Soz, I'm just so tired, babes. I'm so tired. The devil makes work for idle hands. You keep busy all day, you keep your nose clean, but, you know, if you don't keep busy, then it's going to bite you in the backside. Just in the last two, three, four days, all I've seen with Craig is, is Craig lying around, and I think that's wrong. It's bloody hard. It's hard. You want to do so much, yet you haven't got your energy in order to do it. He's not pulling his weight. And at the moment, he's on, he's on a free ticket, you know. He's getting a free lunch every day. Literally, that request of being like monkeys, so just scrabbling around on our hands and knees, picking food. Crazy. After searching for hours, they've failed to find a caiman crocodile, but they have discovered a few wild figs. Oh, Worse. stood up, ow. Oh. Fainting. Fainting. <laughs> um, I assume it's dehydration. We get to those beaches, I think, and then round before tide changes and hits us. The men decide to return to camp, but they've been out so long, their way back through the mangrove has been cut off by the rising tide. They have to take an alternative route across a rocky coastline. In the afternoon. Heat is at its zenith. Where are the figs? Good question. Where are the figs? It's a sign of how fucked up our brains have become. Then pick a whole bucket load on our hands and knees like monkeys, and then wander off leaving the bucket there. No. That's just a quick shifty back in it. Yeah. yeah. Go go go. Totally Chris's fault, though. I mean, he was carrying the buckets. Yeah. Six-year-old Chris returns for the figs, but it's a dangerous gamble. With the tide rising at a metre an hour, the route back to camp is rapidly becoming more difficult. Extreme hunger affects not only, obviously, your physical strength, but also your decision-making ability. Mate! And if there's doubt, don't take the risk. You'll only get it wrong once. Good to go, mate. I am finally good to go. Got the figs back, heading back to camp now. It's about an hour's walk. 
Not sure whether we're too late for this. Now approaching high tide, the beach has disappeared. Oh, oh Ooh, shit. mate. You all right? Yeah. I'll be all right. The rocks are lethal. It's risky. Oh, shit. It's a chasm of doom. Means the trouble with this route is we've got all these little gullies that just get worse and worse. Death defying jump. She's going to test you, isn't it, mate? I ain't doing that. No? Sure? Sure. 100%? 100%. No meal limits. Right, if you're right, not enough. sure, mate, don't do it. No. It's a broken leg or worse. So I'll go down and round. Hey, you three, that bucket, mate. The pigs. Ah, balls. Oh, fuck. Uh. Unwilling to risk the jump, Chris has no choice but to take his chances in the sea. Well, mate. And Mike follows. You know. The currents on this stretch of shoreline can reach six knots, powerful enough to pull even the stronger swimmer out to sea. Jumping the ravines, Rupert's made it ahead of the others. Chris! Brace! OK, and move. This is fucking dangerous, Fletch. Quickly as we can. I'm really worried about this bit. Keep a really good hold, hold, hold. Let's go. Let's move. Yeah. Coming in, coming in, brace. Oh, God. OK, OK. And again. Happy chaps, right. having gone through hell. I was pretty close to the edge. <laughs> well done, Chris. The exhausted hunting party returned to camp with only a few figs to show for their efforts. It's like it's been tough here at base. All right, Dino. What, right, babe? Having a tough day? Yeah. <laughs> having a fiance day. How are you? We're good. What did you get? Figs. Ooh. Yeah. Poofy. There you go. We uh, staggered back into the camp, and there is uh, Club 2130, all flat on the backs, storing the bloody heads on. People just sitting around doing fuck all, really. They're quite happy to sit back and let people work around them and provide for them and decide where they're mum or something. I don't really want to get involved in a massive argument, but it's coming to a little bit of a head, I think, slowly but surely. You can see little cracks starting to appear and people are like, boom, boom. Like little, little comments here and there are coming out and you're like, oh, judgy. I bit my tongue long enough. There's certain people that day after day, do absolutely nothing, and then come like little leeches with their bowls and don't even have the bloody decency to say thank you. And you just think, wow, your moles are as like, low as a snake's belly. This is the life here, guys. Oh, I feel like the Kardashians laying here. <laughs> this is jokes. I got a couple of sardines baking for dinner. It's mid morning. The four youngest members of the group are sunbathing. One of the team there, and I won't say who, just said, I can't wait to get home to play my PlayStation. That is how different we are. <laughs> <laughs> 
I cannot comprehend why you would look down there and go, God, I wish you, I wish it was in my mum's house. Yeah. You know, in my bedroom, playing on a PlayStation. But it's fucking moronic, isn't it? How are we doing, Taff? Not too bad. Are you coming to out, mate? Going for my daily exercise. Do you want to uh, tow this net out for us instead of walking? Maybe. I'm still trying to keep my foot dry. What, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Yes, it's sir. not going to fall off, is it? I'm very, very pissed off. I've just been uh, stopped by Fletcher who all of a sudden has become a bit of a, obviously become a doctor. He must have taken over from Sam's role. Um, asking me why I can't help with a gill net. He explained that I've, uh, I've injured my foot. His reply was, what's the worst that could happen? The only thing that's wrong with his toe, his foot, is the lazy body that's attached to it. He says that he's hurt his foot and can't go in the water, which... I'm starting to lose sympathy, and I think maybe it's actually laziness. Someone said to him, could you do water? And he's like, oh, I don't know, maybe. It's like, have some fucking pride in yourself. He's just idle. And if he stayed here, he'd slowly kill himself through idleness. Get off your lazy ass and do something. People take the piss like that. It's just an insult to the rest of us. I'm not going to be able to hold my tongue, I don't think. Do try, Rupert. I'll try, but it's difficult, Sam, sometimes. After weeks on the island, it isn't just the younger group members that Rupert has his differences with. Not much water left in that puddle, guys. Sam, me and him disagree on pretty much absolutely everything. He's uh, sort of sharing, caring, feeling, emotive, all that stuff. I think I'm a lot more hard-nosed in life than, than Sam, uh, a little less forgiving. 43-year-old Rupert lives in L.A., where he moved to further his TV career. I'm kind of divorced and starting a new chapter, rediscovering who I am again after 10 years of marriage. I almost had this weird fantasy about being shipwrecked or being a castaway, um, kind of Robinson Crusoe or the Lord of the Flies scenario kind of thing. And I guess it's because it's a, it's a, a way of challenging yourself and seeing what you're capable of. I'm kind of hoping I come out of this with a sort of zen calmness. Everyone else is working their asses off in the sun, sweating, uh, working all morning. Craig's over there having a nice little swim with Dean, like they're in the Blue Lagoon having a romantic holiday. He's supposed to be on firewood today. I think he's done two small armfuls all day and the rest of the time just lying around. But I don't think that we should start talking about, you know, if he's not going to pull his weight, he should go. Cos no, no, no. We, you know, we, we came on here as 13 guys, we leave mm. as 13 guys, that's full stop. Right? Look. It's days and days of this now. It's just every time you see him, he's lying on the ground doing nothing or asleep. I, I just that winds me up. Sorry, I have to say something. Craig, have a word, mate. If you don't notice, everybody else is kind of working and sweating and all that. What have I you done today? I've just been down there, Mum Firewood. I've just been down near Brandon Beach. And I, I just... know, I saw you walking there and come back, but you didn't come back with anything. Yeah, well, I'm trying to find firewood. There's a lot of firewood, mate. A walk down the beach and coming back with empty arms yeah, isn't really doing it, is it? I little sticks. Did you get some? I couldn't find any. You can't stuff. find little sticks. Mate, come on, why are you here? Why are you here? I don't know, I asked my question now. I know. I read a lot to go, so I know. I'm fucked off a bit. I know, well, don't, don't walk away, I want to talk to you. All we're asking is that you kind of make an effort to help with the group, and that's kind of just, I'm not seeing it. I know you've had injuries and stuff like that, that's fair enough, but you're walking around now, and I just want to be able to see. So all you want to do is bitch, and that's all you I'm not bitching. Do. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. Why are you here? Same reason you were here. I doubt it, because I seem to be doing a very different uh, time on this island than you are, so. I don't want the camera in my face. I haven't got time to fuck it up. I don't know who the fuck he thinks he is. He's exactly the same as me on the island. I don't care what job he does. He's exactly the same as me on the island. And he hasn't got no fucking right to come and speak to me like that. And I walked away from him because I, my temper rises very quickly. Let yeah. me tell him. Yeah. And it means, oh, oh, that's how you deal with it. That's, that's a man way to do it. Fuck off. <laughs> Going. 
No. No, I've had enough. I'm going. I'm going. Listen, don't be rash. Tomorrow I'm off to my wonderful land of Wales. Craig, don't do that, mate. Craig, mate, listen, buddy, we'd be devastated if that happened. Sorry, I'm not apologetic for it, but uh, I'm not. The clash between Rupert and Craig has affected the group. It's very easy to criticise other people, very easy, you know? And, I, you know, I, I could easily criticise some of the guys that like to lie on the beach and sunbathe. And I could easily criticise the people that have a massive go at people, which is completely out of turn. I think both those things probably actually don't sit that well with me. But I just don't think that we should be sniping at each other and picking up on those things. It's because it's only happening because we're hungry, we're knackered, we're spending 24 hours a day in each other's company. And I can just feel the group falling apart. Because that's my biggest fear here, is that, you know, in this, at this point, when we've done so much, it starts to break up. And I, that would just be a disaster for me. Look at this shit. <laughs> The group has barely eaten anything in days. <sighs> I've ensured this island has enough water, animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. It seems to go quite quiet inland. Not much life. Rupert and the hunters are scavenging the forest for anything to eat. We look. Yeah, maybe. Oh, we can get down to the beach here again. Rupert! Look, they've got something. Woo! That is what you call a yucca. Yes! Solid oh, carbs, man. mate. Wow. Solid wow. carbs. Just one? No, no mate, no, the no. forest. Over there to somewhere over here. Really? Yeah, mate, and they're just popping out the ground everywhere. There. Welcome to the yucca these. forest. Oh, wow. That's the yucca right there, this baby here. The yucca has edible potato-like roots. You wait till you get some good carbs in your belly. Very happy. Let's go and tell the boys. For maximum efficiency, really, you want to be getting about 60% of your energy from carbohydrates. And these yucca plants are actually some of the best carbohydrates known to man. The men's bodies will turn them into energy far more quickly than the protein that they've been eating. Wake up, you dozy bastards! Hang on, I just heard something coming up in the background. Hello! Like this, this sounds good. We got something for you. Anyone for carbohydrate? Wow! Oh, my God! Welcome to your first yucca meal tonight. We eat like royalty. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> beauty. If I don't get a drink of water, I am going to pass out. Run, get a stick, quick. A spear! Get a spear! A spear! Shit. Shit. Go, go, go. Tangled in the fishing nets is another welcome discovery. Oh, Zachy, what is it? Let's bring the whole lot in. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. Done. Watch out for that Done. stinger. He's done. Holy cow, that is massive. He's done. Shit. Fish and chip for dinner. <laughs> We're going to eat. The stingray is big enough to feed all 13 men. Wow. It totally lifted spirits just when they needed lifting. I think everyone was getting into survival slump, I guess. I think surviving in this environment is, is feast, feast and famine, you know, the waves of feast and famine, yeah? Yeah. And today we're, we're having a feast. The promise of their first proper meal in weeks has brought a fragile peace to the camp. We don't have champagne, we don't have a DJ, but now, it's party time! Oh, look at all that meat, man! They look a little bit like a haggis, don't they? A little bit. I've never had haggis. Oh, you, know, you should try Sheets. catching them, mate. They are so difficult to catch. What, a haggis? Yeah. yeah. But they've got one leg shorter than the other, so they can go around, go around mountains a lot easier. Really? Yeah, mm. they're crazy. They can only go one they're direction. Corner, yeah. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So you've got, you've, you've got a clockwise and anti-clockwise one, and they're completely oh. different species. I've never seen a haggis. Yeah. Oh. Is there any haggis here? No, they only get them in the uh, Scottish Highlands. It's sort of purpley, aren't they, Fletcher? I'd say more mauve. Yeah, I was going to say mauve. Well, the animal's mauve. Like, it looks brown, but then when you catch it in the sun, it's got like this glint, you know, like... So like it's got some highlights. Dogs, dogs can eat, I guess. It essentially, yeah. yeah. It's a hairdresser's dream. It oh, really wow. is, yeah. <laughs> Haggis is not an animal, is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you lot of bastards. <laughs> Sizzler, look at that. Oh. Really good. Yeah, we, we finally got a meal with meat and veg. Sounds good. It's literally what dreams are made of. After being deprived for weeks, the men are now experiencing a serious carb high. I'm in a happy place. Sam sees an opportunity for some team bonding. I'd like to do some kind of fun stuff as a group, like playing a game of rounders on the beach. I'd like to just hack away up there and build a little chill-out area where we can sit back and, and watch the sun go down. I'd like to make a big bit of beach art that has actually no practical purpose at all. <laughs> I really would love to see a leatherback turtle. I'd love that. We just had a meeting about where we're at, and I think there's kind of obviously two very different sides to the camp now. They want to build sculptures, they want to play rounders, and I know where my priorities lie. We're still at the basic hunter-gatherer stage, and we're living paycheck to paycheck. We haven't got tomorrow's food. It's out there in that sea, hopefully, stuck in the nets. If it isn't, we're fucked, so... As far as I'm really concerned, the rest are in club fucking cuckoo land. Both my grandfathers were miners. Obviously, they passed their digging skills on to me. Gotta love the Welsh. They do try. <laughs> the morning after their first meal of carb-rich yucca, energy levels are high. Energy-wise, I feel like a new man out here. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning with a real spring in my step and a real purpose. Everything <laughs> changed this morning. We've got food coming in, we've got yucca, which is there. There's loads of it, it's gonna keep us going. It's a massive, massive breakthrough. Up to now, the group's all-consuming focus has been about food. But humans require much more than just food and water to survive. At what point do you try and move on from this hand-to-mouth existence and start trying to improve the quality of their lives? We've just found this amazing bit of driftwood. It's, uh, it's the sort of branches of a tree, so we can just hang our coconuts, all our, all our cups. I think it's a great idea. It look quite good, doesn't it? I'm using the day to feather our nest. Um, just trying to make a few camp improvements, trying to get this place looking good. Sam, let's go Sam, Sam. <laughs> Sam is, is the campus man on this island. And given that Dino's on the island, that, that takes some doing. Yeah, he's, he's the gay straight bloke I know. Oh, I think that's rather nice, that. Well done, Sam. It's all shaping up, isn't it? What do you think to the, uh, the new pieces of furniture? Nice. Rupert turns his nose up at all sorts of things that I've done, you know, hat stand and coconut tree. All these things for me are part of creating an environment that we want to live in, that we're happy to live in. But for him, they're an, an unnecessary part of survival. Despite the big yucca find, Rupert continues to search for food at every opportunity. Ropes, bring machete. What do you got? What do you got? What do you think? Well, it's not pizza. <laughs> Oysters, no. Oysters, mate. Yeah. Oh, I'm just sweating. I didn't come here to play house. And it's all very well making a camp look pretty and building little things to put mugs on and all that kind of stuff, which is great and it looks nice, but our priority should be finding food because I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Fuck me! Huge! And it's like, I don't know, everyone's just kind of sort of crossing their fingers and hoping, and that's not really a way to survive. That's uh, gambling with your lives a bit. I mean, Sam's building a swing. Whee! No one's cooking. None of the other shit that he's doing around. It's just like, come on. With yucca supplies in camp running low, Rupert takes a team to harvest some more. 
Funny smell. There's a sweet smell around here, isn't it? Yeah, something's rotting a little something bit. Something is rotting. Yeah. Soft and squishy. Rotten. The harsh tropical environment has played a cruel trick on the men. Many of the tubers have rotted in the ground, and there's hardly any yucca left. Look at the state of that, mate. It's rotten. It's absolutely rotten. Minging. That is not edible. We've got one day of yucca left, so that's just gone bleak again. We ain't great. We're very short of food. We're out of yucca. I think it's kind of got to a slight I told you so point, but I never want to say I told you so, because that's uh, very annoying when people do that. But there's no food today. Is it all fucked? Because we're on an island, I'm going to try and save it. I was really shocked. We thought we would get we'd on top of the food. I think, you know, it brought everyone back down to reality and made everyone realise that, OK, we need more food. I'm going to try and get as many pieces into everyone's bowl as possible so that everyone gets the same amount. Saki dishes up the very last of the yucca. I don't think we'll survive well if, without any carbohydrates. It's the one food that everybody gets a hell of a lot of energy out of the yucca, which really genuinely lifts everybody's spirit. So it's such a shame there's so little left. It's pretty obvious to me that we're running out of food. They've searched everywhere. We're running out of energy. We need food, and we need it for tonight. In camp, the men discuss the best way to feed the group. Do you think caiman is an important food source? It's a good source of protein. It's not fish, and it tastes nice. For Rupert, hunting down an old enemy could replace the yucca and feed the camp. I think the caiman kind of catapulted us from sitting around eating snails and nothing to giving us a big energy boost to doing a whole load of stuff. So who's to say that couldn't happen again? It is not necessary for the survival of our community to kill caiman. Gillnets have provided, you know, more protein than, than many, many caimans combined. We might get two or three days of no fish. Could be on snails again every night. Who wants that? It's, it's, it's about stepping forward, isn't it? And stepping upwards and moving on. Trying to find one of these prehistoric toothed beasts that could uh, rip off your arm and maybe catch one and return a hero has become a little bit of an obsession. What do you reckon, Kip? I think you're full of shit. I should be, we should be hunting those pink elephants. They're the ones that are bugging me. <laughs> Realities are still very much kind of living hand to mouth and there's no guaranteed food source that they can always rely on. But my view is the real enemy is actually the disunity in the camp. Do it. Despite the differences of opinion, Rupert sets out once more to hunt for Cayman Crocodile. And I am joining Fletch and CB on the search for more food. Each time the group heads to the mangroves, it takes up two or three men. Um, it takes up a huge amount of energy. It takes up water uh, and it takes up time. Those resources could be used far better. You know, we could catch fish, we could knock down coconuts, we could pick snails, all the sort of stuff that's easily available on this island. But Saki and his team of snail gatherers think the answer to feeding the group lies on the rocky shoreline. Snail gathering has probably been one of the most important jobs we've had since we've been on the island. Yeah, I completely agree. When times get hard, you've got to knuckle down and make sure that you have the bare necessities. The glory of the caiman hunt or the full belly of the snails, I choose the full belly of the snails. I just love the adventure and trekking through the jungle, hacking away. It's the nature of, of being here and surviving. Oh. Ah, it's muddy! That's really muddy. <laughs> ah, bollocks. This is a stupid plan. This is where the food is, gentlemen. Oh, to get the food, we have to come in here. Look at that. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Indeed. All right, onwards. Snackery. <laughs> stuck in the mud. And the problem with this is that we're moving at about 0.1 miles an hour. And the Cayman can probably skitter across this stuff in about 20 miles an hour. So right now they have us at uh, quite a considerable advantage. Rupert's just an egotistical alpha male. Wannabe, I'd say. He's constantly imposing himself upon the smaller people that he deems aren't as valuable as he is. He wants to be Rambo, let him play Rambo. But that's pointless. That's, that's detrimental to the group. 
Success? Oysters and figs. But oysters and figs are not enough for Rupert. He's got a new idea. We're going to go Cayman hunting at night, because the only way I think we're going to catch them now. Night uh, is when they hunt, so that's their element. The danger side of it goes up considerably by doing that. But it's a risk, I think, that's worth taking. Tonight, Saki, me and Dan are going out in the swamps to find Cayman. It's not going to work. Pipe dream. It's yeah. not a pipe dream. No, no, I don't think it is. No, really fucking caught one, so... I'm just going to say that I've opted out of Cayman hunting. I'm heading there tonight. There you go. That's sorted, then. I've already been there, done that, so to speak. And I've got plans with these guys to do various things. Saki suddenly announced I'm no longer anything to do with the so-called Cayman hunting, which, um, uh, I don't know, struck me as kind of somewhat arrogant. He didn't seem to have the balls to talk to me personally and say he wasn't going to do it and come and do it. I don't know why he doesn't want to do it. He hasn't said. He hasn't spoken to me since, to be honest, and I haven't spoken to him. Look out below. Bringing in all the foods on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's far more important than a game that you can't even see. They haven't seen one. And yet they're still pursuing it, because they're, going, they're glory hunting. I just hope uh, I don't come across as too kind of crazed uh, loner. But long term, I think they'd probably agree with me when they're starving. So uh, I think I'd uh, like to feel I'm still right. This time, along with Chris and Mike, someone else is up for the thrill of the hunt. Just about to get ready now to go out into the mangrove for a bit of night came and hunting. Um, some of the guys were going, and uh, I just thought it sounded too exciting to pass out. Well then, let's go. See you later. See you later, Jack. Luck, boys. See you later, man. I am excited by the prospect of nighttime came and hunting, like any red-blooded male. But uh, it seems like a bit of an insane expedition, really. Oh, oh shit! In the tidal mangrove swamps at night. The Cayman crocodiles themselves will be hunting their prey. My concern is that uh, they don't stand a chance in the water with Because we can't wrestle it in wasting water. This is crazy. We're just slowly making our way through the mangrove swamp, looking to see whether we can see the reflection of any Cayman in their torches. Nothing so far, but we can hear movement inside the mangrove all the time. Everywhere we go, there's just little sounds, little rustling noises, little slaps in the water. It's really, really spooky. What is that? Something quite big just shot past my feet. Look, 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 look. it's Kim. Kim. There, it's him. Rupert and the men are on a dangerous night hunt for Cayman crocodile in the pitch black mangroves. Well, there's something I can hear it. Whoa! Trails gone cold. Everyone good to carry on? On this week's episode of the Clueless Cayman Hunters, the Clueless Cayman Hunters decide to go into a mangrove swamp attempting to catch a crocodile with their bare hands. Stay tuned to see who can get their leg bitten off. After an hour of fruitless searching, some of the hunting party are starting to have their doubts. Clueless Cayman hunters. 
None of us have got a clue, have we? No. <laughs> no. So that's the whole point of this trip, is to maybe try and work out. The see thing is, we've, we've got a doctor, a director, a businessman <laughs> and an IT here. <laughs> Collectively, <laughs> we still know nothing. Well, you see, that is the intrepid British spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Is there likely to be one on this peninsula? There will be one uh, 30 clicks in that direction. <laughs> 30 clicks? <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's like a tropic thunder. Should we have a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> but I still have hope, and uh, you never know. Mm. But we got one, mm. something. Yeah. But whilst we're stood here having this conversation, they're all kind of out there playing cards, smoking cigars, and <laughs> yeah. drinking whiskey. Yeah, they and, um, they're, 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 they're British guys again. Yeah. They killed old Jack the other day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 lame Jack. Jack. Yeah, lame Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams of another Cayman crocodile dashed. The men head back to camp. Wow, check this out. Very fresh. Big. Big old turtle track. Dan! Dan! What? Dan, he's here. He's serious. You see him over there. Yeah, no, he's digging in there. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god, it's huge. Wow. Beautiful thing. The endangered green sea turtle has come onto the island to lay her eggs. A very rare. So special. It's phenomenal. Just a huge, huge privilege to see this. Wow. Speechless. The lion was desperate to see these. It's food for the soul, is that, mate? It's food for the soul. Ryan's going to be gutted. Oh, mate, he is. I almost think we should not tell him. You don't get your ass out of camp, you don't go and see shit. Don't forget it. Mate, that was... That was awesome. And we're not allowed to eat those, right? <laughs> After the failed night hunt, most of the group are now convinced that pursuing crocodile is a waste of time and energy. It's nice to have an audience when you work. And for all the naysayers, I think, oh, it's pointless and all that. Um, if you don't try, you don't succeed. And uh, they're obviously trying very hard just to sit around the camp and do nothing. Um, and they're succeeding at that. They're doing very well at that, in fact. What are the chances of a lovely cup of tea? News of last night's turtle sighting has spread. <coughs> Mate, I tell you what, it was a big turtle. Beautiful thing. Mate, I couldn't give a shit. I'll Google it. Nah. Google it. <laughs> I'll happily Google silverback turtle. Like, I would rather sleep. I've not slept in three days and woken up about a turtle, man. I can't believe. I've been saying since day one, and seeing the turtles was the most important thing to me about this trip. I said, if I see one of them, I will die happy. Five guys got three metres away from him and didn't come back and get me. Genuinely, mate, I remember thinking, oh, Ryan would love to see this. But, you know, we were just worried that we'd disturb it too much and, you know, we didn't want to go and wake people up. Those are the reasons, mate. I know you can spend a lifetime trying to see those and fail. Fuck off. I will never forgive any of you, right? I was a little bit naughty, uh, I have to admit, a confession. I couldn't quite help myself. I innocently started talking about how wonderful the turtle was. Well, Ryan, if you're going to sit there in meetings and call us going out at night and do all that kind of stuff, a pointless exercise and uh, a waste of time and a pipe dream, then why the fuck should we come and get you? You never believe what that arsehole just said to me. Who? Rupert. And he's like, oh, that turtle was so amazing last night. I can't believe it. You can spend your whole life looking for them and fail. The guy's a fucking yeah, He used to Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Fucking fuck! Ryan, Ryan. I shouldn't have to worry about childish reactions from people like that, should I? He missed out. Tough shit. Um, I have very little sympathy for him on this one. He needs to grow up or fuck off. <laughs> Rupert, all his negativity that he's expressed over the last couple of days, attacking Craig, he's really attacking Ryan. <laughs> You know, taking rather being childish when actually doing childish things himself, just things that are completely unhelpful. I really hope these guys can come together and build an effective team, but the reality is when you're tired and you're hungry, the more primal side of us comes out, then you learn what people are really like. But it's either all or nothing with Rupert. It's either his way or no way. I would say the group has outgrown Rupert. 
the human side of it starting to kind of just bear down a little bit on me. Um, if I could get rid of half the people here, then it would be a lot better. I don't understand. Why, why, be, why be so difficult? It's, it's an age thing, mate. It must be an age thing or, or hang-ups that he's got. He, he has to be right all the time. He has, his word is final. So it's to pick on people that he thinks they're not going to argue. What's the pick point? For all of the fact that we've um, been together as a tribe and we've collaborated, my prediction is that if we had to stay for longer, the group would actually split in half. Yeah, and then it'd be um, interesting to see how half of them actually fed themselves when the people that actually get all the food yeah. decided just to look after themselves. Of like, actually, if you're not looking for it and not contributing towards that, why should you get any? Um, I think we'd start sticking some of the fucking weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. I, I, th I find it a little unfortunate that you, you see the world like that. It, it will become Lord of the Flies, and they end up killing the rest of them. Um, uh, and they finally get rescued, but it, it, humans then go back to their fucking savage past, and they're, you know, when it comes to desperation and hunger, um, it will get nasty. Next on the island... What did you just do a wanker sign towards me? Fuck you! As the end approaches... The meeting's not over yet, you dickhead. Tensions rise. You're just full of bullshit. I can't be bothered to fucking argue anymore. Why take not? the piss. Somebody makes it easy to take the piss. Why not take the piss? Ugh. The guy's still physically declining. Oh, my Lord. The pipe of justice. Something is going to have to change if they're going to stay the course. Welcome to the first Shirley Island election. <laughs>